can't help but bins. I used to be obsessed by bins for a while. Do you think it's been done? <laughs> He's on fire. Recycling old work. <laughs> on fire. One yeah. bin liners. <laughs> bin liners, yeah. I'm not even going to get into ponds. I'm going to be walking around and chatting as well as sitting on a few benches with photographer Neil McDermott. He's been a working photographer for 30 years and we're going to be talking about how he's maintained his motivation, how he tackles travelling around the UK, how he approaches strangers for portraits and his relationship with social media. I had so much fun making this and I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I did making it. I didn't realise it until quite recently to be honest that um, I spent a huge amount of my life traveling up and down the country. I grew up in Scotland on a small farm uh, and I moved to London in my early 20s. And uh, I've been up and down the country basically semi-permanently since then. One of the main ways of traveling up and down the country is I tend to use trains. So I spend quite a lot of time going through these uh, train ticket websites looking for cheap, cheap tickets and surprisingly how, how cheap you can get places. Um, there was a period before COVID where you could get to Birmingham for about six pounds um, if you went on a slow route. So I used to do that quite a lot to go to the Midlands and then take trains from there or trams and buses. Um, and um, I still do quite a lot. I mean, I had a, I went through a period where I couldn't work out where I wanted to go. So I used to get a bit hung up about it. It was a bit stressful, weirdly. And, 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 and then I started just to go to the station which was my local station, Clapham Junction, um, and, and just pick a pick a, 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 a town to go from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a tip I would give to other photographers is to use something in your in your life that you maybe don't realize that you have an advantage over other people. And that's something I, I've been able to do, travel up and down the country. Um, so you do these like single day trips? Yeah, I tended to go, I tended to go just for a day because if you go and stay away in a hotel, that starts to cost quite a bit of money and then you also have dinner. So I would generally get a packed lunch um, and go and, you know, take a packed lunch, but I'd often eat my packed lunch before 10 o'clock. Uh, and then I'd have to struggle through the afternoon absolutely starving and then crawl back into London on the latest train. Do you put a bit of maybe kind of undue pressure on yourself? Maybe you've got this finite amount of time. How do you manage that? Are you conscious, you're like, oh, I've spent X amount on a train, I've got eight hours, I need to get some good shots, or are you just pretty chill about it these days? Well, I try to go out with this idea that, oh, it's all fun and, you know, I, 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 whatever happens, whatever happens. But then in the back of my mind, I know that I've spent a bit of money and I'm going to spend this whole day going to some place, so there is a bit of pressure there. So it's a sort of mix between easy come and a bit of pressure, but I tend to find if I go somewhere and I haven't got anything with the first hour or two, I start to get a bit worried. And I, I realize this sort of tip that works for me is just to start taking pictures of stuff that isn't necessarily very good and might not get used later on. And it gets me going. Um, and, and then that hopefully leads into to, to better shots. I think, I think one of the other things that I found is that often if I got really good pictures or one or two that I felt were good early on, that I would end up maybe slacking off a bit and not pushing it out for the rest of the day. So that's something I'm very conscious about. And I often find that I get either good pictures early or much later in the day, just before I'm about to get on the train. So pushing out this last hour or so. So I feel like I've, yeah, I've used the day as best I can. But obviously there are many days where you go and the pictures are not that great and you have to live with that and you have to get used to that flow of some days are better than others. Are you taking many street portraits at the moment? I still do the occasional one. I don't do as many as I used to. I think as a photographer, or maybe in any creative discipline, you get practice at it. You, you, you've, you, see, you see the portraits much more. So I just don't see them as many. Well, obviously I meet a lot of people in the street, but I'm maybe not focusing on it, excuse the pun, as much as I might do. Um, but I think it's probably something I will always do a little bit of. Uh, I think it's, when I started, I, you know, I was just doing these single street portraits in different towns across the UK. Yeah. And there was a time when I thought, I thought, oh gosh, I'm getting typecast. 
But then I realized, you know, it's good to be typecast. People need something simple to get to get hold of. Oh, they're the, you're the photographer who does this sort of thing. And I think I'd learned that from people who are hugely successful creatively. So, you know, you're Andy Warhol's in his soup cans and David Hockney in his swimming pool and Bridget Riley with her stripes and sort of thing. So something very simple to get people started is, is a really good thing for it's a really good thing for uh, for well, for me, but I, you know I don't do as many portraits now as I did. But I I've probably done a, a few, but I find it really hard getting over that like anxiety of walking up to a stranger, talking to a stranger. You must have to be pretty proficient at that to have done so m many, right? I think I didn't realise that maybe it's just either it's a stage in my life or something I was always good at. But something I really really enjoy is just stopping and chatting to people. I didn't realize it. And I'm glad I found it because I, I realized that you do need to utilize the things that you're good at. And um, I, I, I guess I'm quite good at it. And maybe it's this kind of Scottish thing. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just uh, something I've, I'm practiced at, but I really enjoy it. It's, um, but saying that, I still get, I still find it really, really difficult. What's your uh, relationship like with social media? I've always been a big fan of social media, to be honest. I've, I've never had too many difficulties with it. And uh, I, I find that it's still find it incredible when I get messages from all around the world, from being able to reach people in far flung places. And I had a lot of success with the latest book I did, Breakfast in South Korea, of all places. And they just found me through social networks and saw a lot of books there. Um, I started, weirdly, on LinkedIn for some reason. I'm not sure. Somebody sent me one of these things to join. And then I went on to Twitter. I was very cautious at the beginning. I still am quite cautious about it. And then after that, I think I did Facebook and then Instagram. Oh no, I forgot. Right at the beginning, I had a Tumblr account. Okay. Tumblr is the weirdest place, and I still have that account, which I quite like. Like It's just full of all sort of weird, but I like that. So yeah, I've got pretty good social networks. I think one of the things that when social networks started, there was a lot of organizations that used to say, oh, we should get the young people to do the social networks. You know, somebody young. But in fact, I think social networks actually suits people that are a little bit older. It's the ability to chat online of small comments and, and that sort of thing. So yes, I'm, 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 I like social networks and, and particularly Facebook, believe it or not. I, I like Facebook. It managed to reach an audience which is not necessarily photographers, which I really enjoy. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm still, but one of the things is I t t tend to keep a very steady course. So I tend to just show pictures on a regular basis. And I think I want people to, well, I'd like people, I don't want them, I'd, you know, just to, just to feel that there's a constant and I will, I will go out there and try and shoot something new. Um, I also think social networks has been good for me because you get bored older, you do need something to drive you, to keep you motivated, to keep going out. And I like that, that, uh, you know, photography has to have an audience. It's a kind of, I think I've, I've mentioned this before in talks I've done in the past. I think most creative dis disciplines is a sort of, I would use the word show business. It's, it's, I don't mean it's like razzmatazz and, and Hollywood or Las Vegas. I mean, it's this idea that you have to show. It's the business of showing. It's no point just keeping your photos under your bed. You know, you need to go out there and show. And social networks is, is a good way of doing that. I think you have to remember that somebody my age, that if you went back 15 years ago before social networks, there weren't really a huge amount of places you could show your work. Um, galleries don't have that many shows of documentary or street photography. Um, magazines, we used to do Sunday supplement magazines, they rarely show uh, photo series anymore. So when social networks came along, it was a way for photographers like ourselves, like myself, to show work. Uh, it is incredibly hard work though, and I think you have to, re I have to realize that and accept that. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of social networks. When you're working on, I mean, you've published quite a few books. Yep. When you're working on a book, are you conscious about keeping stuff back from social networks or? I think initially when I started, I was quite, I used to keep stuff back to do a book uh, and that sort of thing, but I'm not too fussed about that now. I've got a massive archive of, of, of work. So I, I, I sort of, 
I've sort of slightly ambivalent about photo books at the moment. They're incredibly difficult to sell with the cost of living crisis and selling to Europe is much harder. So I'm, I'm not uh, doing books at the moment, They're much more expensive to make. Um, whether I come back to it, I'll see you in time. Um, it's nice to do books, They're incredibly hard work, quite stressful trying to get them right. Certain satisfaction when you get them done. But I think there's a bit of a hang up that photographers feel they have to do a book. But I, I, I definitely would say, you know, just making good work and enjoying being a photographer, reaching an audience is, is, is really important ahead of doing books. Talk about your archive. I don't want this to come across as maybe a bit too, too over the top, but it does seem like you seem to have like an endless pool of just beautiful, photo, like incredible photographs. Like do you, when you're archive diving, are you sometimes surprised like, oh wow, like, <laughs> look I, at this. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's kind of, you say beautiful, but I mean, I think it's, that's something that's really important to me is to do pictures that have a certain beauty in them. And um, I think it's work that I've, enjoyed with other photographers this idea of having a certain beauty that uh, that you do need to well I, I enjoy having in my work um, but yeah I do I find I, actually I, I did a book about southwest London which is called South, Southwestern um, and I tried to dig out all the images that I shot for that but there was one shot that I actually don't really have that much memory of taking and it was of uh, two children playing on the street with plastic flowers and I, I forgot it was two years at least after the book had come out that I found it and I posted it online and it was massively viral and people sent all these messages to me about it. It wasn't a picture I particularly liked, but um, I think it is nice when you've got a big archive and you can pull stuff out later on and people can connect with it. I think particularly when it's about a place, um, we tend to forget that people often are drawn to photographs because they're of a time and a place time is such a defining aspect of photography when it's taken um, and you can show all the elements of time passing um, and but place is big and I, I love that when I can connect with somebody um, and they see a picture and they go oh I, I lived around the street from that or a corner from that or I remember that shop front I remember I used to go there when I was a child so that's a big thing in, in the work I sh show that I love when I can make a connection with people I think I think for me um, Something I try to bring up quite a lot is that I didn't really start taking, doing my own projects until I was well into my 40s, my mid 40s, really. Um, and I think a lot of photographers, when they're young, are a bit frustrated. They're having to do uh, either a lot of commercial work as a photographer, like I did, or maybe having a job which isn't in photography and they find it difficult. But I think one thing I always kept hold of was this belief that, you know, I will go out and somewhere down the line and make a lot more work and, and be a photographer a lot more. And I think I can't if and I emphasize enough to people is it just to keep the spirit there. And, and if you keep that, then it will come back and you will be able to shoot and be able to do that. But it is quite a how it's like a little something inside yourself that you have to nurture and look after and think, you know, I will I, I will get a chance to take a lot more pictures in the future or I have done in the past, which I can use to you know take a break for a while and then come back. Um, and, and make, but it is hard. You do need the motivation. You know, why would I get on a train to go all the way to Northampton or somewhere? I mean, and that's something as a photographer you really, really need to have if you're going to be successful. I think it's just this idea that I will keep going and I will keep making work over a longish period of time. We've had a few questions on our uh, Patreon and our Discord for Neil. I thought I'd reach out to them and say, hey. Yeah. I'm trying right. to Neil. I also have a bit of question. Yeah. Alex Greenway asks, Neil, yep. what is your method for approaching people for portraits? Do you pose them or do you let them pose how they Okay. Want? Hello, Alex. Um, I think we may have chatted before or something online, but anyway, what do I do well? I mean, there's no, there's no uh, formula for this sort of stuff. I don't have a little uh, laminated board where I go through uh, and, uh, you know, everything differs from every one, but I think when I approach people, I try to be as honest as possible, as simple as possible. And I also try to speak quite clearly to them, say, oh, this is what I'm trying to do. So hopefully if they agree, I have realized I've got a very short span of time when I'm going to take people's portraits because I don't want it to get into something which is too posed. And I want a, a little bit of tension between what's going on between the people. So I'll be looking, I'll think, oh, I've met this person and they're wearing a certain thing or they're in a certain situation. I'm looking around, I think, okay, I've got this one spot which I think is going to work. 
and I say, oh, you know, can you go here? And I just do two or three shots. Um, when I'm trying to do color portraits, I'm trying to build up this idea of different color elements in it, maybe about what they're, what they're wearing. Um, so yeah, I basically say, oh, can you just go here? And that's it. Most of my portraits tend to be done in, in the shadow rather than the sun, which makes it easier to balance colors around. But, um, um, and I tend, I tend to have people, uh, so they're not, definitely not staring with the sun on their face like it is now. This is not a very good portrait we're doing here of me, is it? Because I'm the sun. I'm getting, I'm getting a bit of a tan though. Do you it's want good. You can move if you want. No, it's good. It's good. I like this. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Good question then. Jaw loss. Yeah. Maybe a complimentary question. How does Neil choose between posed portraits, candid portraits, landscapes, cityscapes, and still lifes when it comes to sequencing an entire pro pro Project. project. Okay. I don't often see many genres of photography coming together in a single project. Right. But something about the way Neil sequences and curates his work, his project, makes the project makes his projects feel greater than the sum of their parts. Oh, okay. Um, that's kind. Um, I think one of the things that, as a photographer, I'm, I'm trying to continue the aesthetic, which for me is often a color color passion between different things and. I think often that tries to be my dominant factor is this idea of different colors um, in, 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 different, in different styles of work. And I think it is quite difficult to try and drift between different styles of work to make, it, to make some continuity. At the moment, I'm actually quite drawn to having pictures which are from completely different feelings. So like a big landscape from somewhere maybe in, say, in remote Scotland with a, with a cityscape which was done uh, almost like a still life of a shot front and trying to match them up. It is a very difficult thing to do. Um, uh, but I think, you know, the photographers who, are, who I've been influenced with have that ability to do that. And it's something I, I still don't feel like I've mastered, but I look at somebody like Eggleston, who's doing pictures of his wife or his house, his family, and then mixing that in with, you know, pictures of, you know, out in the street. It's a very difficult thing to do, but I think it's something that, I still haven't mastered, but um, something I, I, you know, I work at and I think about an awful lot. So it's a really good question, and I, I'm, I'm glad it's sort of coming together a little bit. But after you know, 15 years of doing projects, I still don't feel like I've nailed it. I think it is something that I work at a lot. Now. Mark Sugden asks, "How do you seem to find such beauty in the seemingly mundane?" Uh, thanks, Mark. That's very kind. Um, I don't know whether I do find beauty, in, uh, but I think I think we're all. I think that is a major thing that lots of photographers have done. I think I obviously brought, brought up William Eggleston as an answer earlier, but it's, and that was a big influence on me. And a lot of photographers, uh, you know, we look at so much of uh, you know vernacular photography, which is rather you know they tend to photograph things which are classically beautiful, whether it's landscapes or you know, um, sunsets and all these sort of things. And I think photographers often have a, how would I say, a, a reaction to that and are looking to, to get a certain amount of beauty, which is just from things which are, they see in their everyday life. I think it's very, very hard to do, but I think we're all searching for that. And not just in photography, I think in, in art and in painting, in, in fiction, in novels, uh, in popular music, you often see that things which are everyday and mundane often make the best, you know, creative expressions. You know, you think about, you know, pop songs. Some of them are just about the most mundane things in life that you, you try to make some creative thing out of them. Um, I don't think I've nailed it. I'm still working on it. You so, know, so I modest. can't help but go look for a pile of rubbish mm. on the street. You take them, hundreds of them, and then you come home and you go, mm, that didn't really work, does it? No. Those Have you good pictures of rubbish? Yeah, those pictures are trash. Ah! Uh, <laughs> what a winner! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, let's call it a day there. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Huge thank you for coming, coming out to my neck of the woods, having a bit of a chat with me. I personally found that really just like motivating. Yeah, it's really inspiring to talk to you, hear a bit more about your process. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Well, if there's anybody you know wants any help or 
just drop me a message. I'm really open to chatting, whatever social network, or drop me an email. I tend to reply quite quickly with short sentences, but um, I think that's something when I got started is just this openness of being engaging and friendly really helped me as a photographer and I saw it with other people and so if I can help at all just drop me a message, say hi and keep in touch. A big thing would be to say would be just to just to keep shooting, keep making work because somewhere down the line it will it will come good for you and you will be able to use it. So thanks very much Josh for including me in this video. <laughs>